walking through Central Park, it's hard to imagine that all this beauty has not been here forever. Originally, Central Park was an area of swamps, small bluffs, and rocky outcroppings, all home to the city's poor living in shanty villages. In the mid-1850s, the city of New York decided it wanted a grand park, rivaling the parks in London and Paris. In 1857, Frederick Law Olmsted and Calvert Vox won a contest to design a magnificent park for New Yorkers to retreat to. Before the end of the year, construction was started in the southern end of the park and continued until its completion six years later. And what a park they created. Less than a decade after the start of construction, the park was being visited by more than 7 million visitors a year. One of the most magnificent designs within the park are the old stone arches and the cast iron bridges. A total of 36 arches and bridges were called for, all designed by Calvert Vox, along with architect Jacob Ray Mould. Today, these stone and cast iron arches are some of the oldest bridges in the country. Entering the park at Merchant's Gate, 8th Avenue and 59th Street, the first arch you come to is Grayshot Arch. This arch was designed by Vox and built between 1860 and 1862 of New England sandstone in Nice, a common rock with variegated colorations. The 80-foot long vaulted archway is lined with Philadelphia red brick. Just a short distance further into the park is Pine Bank Arch, a cast iron, steel, and wood bridge built in 1861 by the Cornell Ironworks Company. In 1984, this bridge was in such poor condition it was about to crumble, and parts were already falling off the bridge. A costly restoration project was started to repair this bridge, and today it is one of the park's most decorative cast iron bridges. One of the more ornate stone arches is Dalehead Arch. Built between 1860 and 1862 of sandstone and brownstone, this arch features cotterfoil cutouts, meaning four leaves, on the balustrades. This arch has remained much the way it did in 1862. Following the carriage path north along the west side of the park, a magnificent double-arched bridge, the Eaglevale Arch, spans 150 feet across the brattle path and what was once Ladies Pond, but was filled in in 1936. The Eaglevale is the only double arch in the park. It was built in 1890, making it one of the newer bridges, and was designed by architect Josiah Cleveland Caddy. Traveling around the north end of the lake into what is called the Ramble, one of the lush woodland areas with an intricate maze of winding paths and meandering creeks, sits one of the more impressive stone arches within the park, the Ramble Arch. Hidden in a dense patch of trees and shrubs, the Ramble Arch towers above the winding path. Built in 1863, the arch is constructed of rock face ashlar and is the narrowest arch in the park at only five feet wide. Continue north along the west side of the park on the old bridle path, and you'll soon come to the Winterdale Arch, a beautifully classic arch. This arch was named after the path that travels through its portal, once called Winter Drive. The arch was built between 1860 and 1861 of main granite and sandstone, and finished with cast iron railings. The vault is lined with red and white brick. Probably the most easily missed and secluded arch in the park is Springbanks Arch. Springbanks is situated on the edge of the North Meadow, not far from the lock and the ravine. It was constructed in 1863 by Vox, with detailing by Jacob Ray Mould. The arch was constructed from Hudson River Valley sandstone, with the vaulted ceilings lined in red brick. 
Situated in the most remote and woodsy area of the park is Glen Span Arch. This arch sits on the edge of the ravine and the loch, the most secluded and peaceful area you will visit within the park. A small waterfall provides a dreamy sound to this tranquil place as the stream, Montaigne's rivulet, carries water from the pool on the west side to the Harlem Mere on the east. Turtles, birds, and frogs can all be found in this thick woodsy area where streams meander through the north woods. Sitting quietly in this area, it's impossible to believe you are sitting in the middle of New York City. This area is also one of the premier birding areas, as it sits squarely along the Atlantic Flyway route for migrating birds. At 110th Street, the furthest point north in Central Park, sits Mount Cliff Arch. Mount Cliff Arch is one of the newer arches in the park, being built in 1890. It's constructed from gneiss and ashlar and is the tallest arch in the park at 48 feet high. Meandering back into the deeper and more remote parts of the park, through the north woods amidst the tangle of forest trees, shrubs, and meandering streams, Huddlestone Arch is almost unnoticeable and disappears magically into the surroundings. It's constructed of huge native rock from within the park and is held together purely by gravity. At first view, it almost appears to be a dark cave in the mountainside, certainly an amazing work of both art and construction. A long, leisurely walk south along the east side of the park, past the beautiful gardens of the conservatory, and just before you arrive at the north end of the Great Reservoir, a gorgeous old cast iron bridge rises stately above the wide carriage path. Aptly named Gothic Arch, it lives up to its name beautifully. Designed by Vox and built in 1864 by the Cornell Ironworks Company, it's made of cast iron, steel, and wood. Prior to automobile traffic, there was quite a bit of equestrian traffic on the bridle paths, and getting pedestrians safely across these paths was the main force behind the many ornate bridges and arches throughout the park. Sitting along the edge of the Great Reservoir, there are two cast iron bridges, both designed by Vox and built by the Cornell Ironworks Company. The Southwest Reservoir Bridge was built in 1864, and the Southeast Reservoir Bridge was built in 1865. Both bridges were built to carry pedestrians over the bridle paths to the Great Reservoir. The Southwest Reservoir Bridge has an arched wooden platform, where the Southeast Bridge has a flat platform. Both bridges are elegantly detailed in cast iron and steel. Continuing south past the reservoir and behind the Metropolitan Museum of Art sits one of the more elegant and ornamental of the old stone arches, the Greywack Arch. This arch was constructed in 1862 and gets its name from the Hudson River Valley sandstone from which it was constructed. This is the only arch to be named after the material from which it was made. The Greywack Arch pulls a strong influence from the Spanish-style architecture and provides a wonderful acoustic studio for local musicians serenading the strolling visitors. Walking south from the beautiful details of the Greywack Arch and just above the Alice in Wonderland sculpture is the Glade Arch. This arch floats gracefully across the well-traveled path. The glade arch almost appears as if it's just casually grown out of the elegant gardens that surround it. At night, in the soft glow of the carriage path lamps, the glade arch seems to almost float across the path from one garden to the other. Sweeping further along the gently rolling path past Alice and her friends and the miniature regatta taking place in the mirrored waters of the Conservancy Pool, a beautifully detailed arch appears along the heavily traveled path called Trefoil Arch. 
This is the only arch in the park to feature a different design on both sides of the arch. The name trefoil means a three-lobed design, as in a three-leaf clover. The east entrance to the arch features this three-lobed clover design, while the west entrance is a simple rounded design. This arch was built in 1862 by Vox and Mould, and beckons travelers through the arch to stop and enjoy the romance of this arch. If there was a postcard bridge within the Central Park, it would have to be the Willowdale Arch. It's not the largest, nor the most elaborate, but its simple quaintness certainly makes this arch a special place to stop and sit. At one time, there was a fountain in the center niche to give mothers a place to rest with their children. A famous photograph was taken of this arch with key architects of the park standing along the cast iron railing above the arch. Sneaking a shortcut through the zoo takes you under Dennis Mouth Arch. This arch is the only one in the park made totally from sandstone. It is one of the oldest arches in the park, built between 1859 and 1860. A fairly late comer to the park's landscape, but nonetheless a wonderfully charming arch is the Inscope Arch. It was built in 1873, over ten years after most of the other arches were completed. The Inscope Arch is made entirely of granite. Olmsted had estimated the construction of the arch at $50,000 due to the fact that it was being constructed in an area that was once a swamp and an area of quicksand. Probably the most famous bridge in the park, and certainly the most visited, is the Gapstow Bridge, crossing a narrow portion of the pond in the most southern section of the park. The view, in almost any direction, provides postcard views of the famous Plaza Hotel, the skating rink, Victoria Gardens, and the beautifully lush landscaping around the pond. The bridge was originally designed by Jacob Ray Mould in 1874 as a wooden bridge, but the bridge could not withstand the heavy traffic and within 22 years was replaced in 1896 by the current stone bridge. The new bridge was designed by Howard and Caldwell and constructed of Manhattan schist. Between the dairy and the carousel is the Playmates Arch. This brightly colored arch is made from Philadelphia pressed brick, Milwaukee yellow brick, and granite. Completed in 1861, the arch got its name from being situated in what was once the children's section of the park. From inside the arch, the whimsical sound of the children's carousel can be heard just a few steps past the arch. Walking southeast across the park, the beautifully detailed Drip Rock Arch sits elegantly between two banks of lush ivy. Built in 1860 by Vox and Mould, this arch is one of the older arches in the park. The contrast of red brick and New England sandstone, along with the lush green sloping banks, gives this arch a very formal, stately appearance. As if the details of the entrance were not impressive enough, the inner walls and vaulted arch, also in red brick and sandstone, all come together to make Drip Rock one of the most picturesque arches in the park. The last arch before exiting the park at Artisan's Gate is Dipway Arch. Also designed by Vox and Mould in 1862, it was constructed of two contrasting granites from a quarry in Seal Harbor, Maine. The original cast iron railings are still intact between the granite balustrades. The interior of the arch is red brick divided into arcades of seven arches with a granite keystone in each. At one time there were benches inside the arch for weary travelers exploring the many corners of this quiet refuge in the middle of a busy city. <laughs> 